to, to tackle the crisis with our youth. So the more flexibility on the ground locally, the better what the results will be. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Senator Bozeman. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all very much for having this important hearing. I had the opportunity to be uh, Chair of Homeland Security in 2017 in that period in that Congress. And as you said, the men and women of the um, Border Patrol are wonderful people that do a wonderful job. The reality, though, is that, they're, that right now their morale is terrible. And when you talk to them, they think the policy on the border is inappropriate and is simply not working. By every metric, the border is a disaster. Despite the rhetoric of the administration, the numbers reported by the Border Patrol of caught and known getaways uh, are off the chart. Our border states and our communities have been overrun, and now many of our major cities, most of them Democratic, are saying literally that you're in the process of destroying their cities. The polling indicates that the public agrees with all of that. They have little confidence with the administration's border policies. And so, you know, you, you mentioned the, the numbers and how it's been growing through the years. In 2017, there were two million people running around the country waiting for adjudication. Uh, when the Biden administration took over, there were 3.6. Now there's six and a half million. So it's almost doubled. Uh, right now, the, you've got 800,000 people that have been adjudicated waiting for uh, their day in court. These are people that, that have been said that they've got probable reason for asylum. Uh, what you're asking for does nothing to, to get those numbers down. I mean, that's, that's the problem. That's what Senator Hovind was talking about. We need metrics so that once we put what you're asking for in place, that you'll have a significant reduction. And to do 800,000 people, that backlog uh, is, is impossible based on what you're proposing. Uh, six and a half million people running around waiting for some sort of adjudication. Uh, the list goes on and on. You mentioned fentanyl. Uh, I think you said, quote, that you were doing an exceptional job. It's the leading cause of death in Arkansas regarding overdoses. By July of this year, uh, Arkansas State Police had seized 12 pounds of fentanyl, enough to kill everybody in the state. So your, your testimony and what is actually happening, uh, there's no, there's no uh, basis in fact. So I guess, I guess the question is, what are we going to do about it? I agree with Senator Hovind. We need some metrics. We need, we need what, if we put in place what you're asking for, how is this going to address the numbers? The six and a half million people that are running around here, how is it going to address the 800,000 backlog? And we're not talking about getting that down to, uh, I think what you're proposing at best just keeps it as it is now. There's not going to be any reduction. Am I wrong in that? Yes, you are. So give me a reason for that. Is it? Give um, me some numbers. Senator, uh, first of all, I want to make it clear, the devastation. Give me a reason of, that of, we're from, gone from 3.6 to 6.5 million. Senator, is it, is, it, is it your assertion that the hiring of additional um, Office of Principal Legal Advisor Attorneys at Immigration and Customs Enforcement with a complement of additional immigration judges would not work to advance the immigration case backlog in immigration court I, I don't know. Tell me, how, it, many, tell me how many that would do, because I think probably what that would do is just maintain where we're at right now. That is absolutely With false. the people that are coming across. Well, give me the numbers that it would do. S Senator, Make I Make it where it is false. Senator, I would be very pleased to confer with you and Senator Hoven to discuss um, the quantification of advancement that we would accomplish with additional funding. But well, I uh, think it is rather axiomatic, quite frankly, that additional Border Patrol agents will advance the security mission at the southern border. 
I think it is rather axiomatic, quite frankly, that additional non-intrusive inspection technology at our ports of entry will advance our efforts to interdict fentanyl. What I, want, what I want to know is this. If we put your program in place, in fiscal year 24, instead of having 800,000 waiting for adjudication, what number would that be? Instead of having six and a half million people running around here for, that have been running around for a long period of time, what would that number be in 24 and 25? And you should know that because what, that's what we're trying to accomplish is to make a dent in those numbers, to make a difference. I don't, I don't know if what you're proposing just simply keeps us where we're at. I don't know how it's affecting, and it's sad that you don't appear to know either. I mean, if I was, if I was bringing forward a proposal to the, and I'm sorry, I'll, yes, but if I was bringing forward a proposal, I would know what it actually did, okay? Thank you, Marcus, if you want to respond, and then I'll go to the next one. I, um, I, I think I've said uh, thank you very much, Chair Murray. I, I think it is rather uh, non-controversial that the addition of personnel and technology uh, in the system would advance uh, the efficient operation of the system, would advance the security of the border, would advance the security uh, of our country. And I think it is also equally axiomatic that fixing our broken immigration system, a fact about which everyone agrees, would advance it even more significantly. Thank you.